Right then, how do you make these glowy spotlight cards? There's lots of little CSS tricks and tips in here, and just nice little details like how the color can change as you move around. Um, to start, we're going to need the pointer position, and we're going to need to pass that into CSS. So as you can see, moving around, moving the pointer around, update some inline custom properties on the root. So you can see them here, X, XP, Y, YP. XP and YP will make sense uh, later on. But yeah, as we move around, those are updating. So if we hop into some code, this is the markup. Two articles with a data glow attribute, and each one has a nested child, which also has the data glow attribute, and that's used to create the outer glow. Yep, the inner element creates the outer glow. Anyway, the first bit of script, or the only bit of script, is just this one event listener on point to move. And on point to move, you're just updating the X and Y based on the X and Y of your pointer. And XP and YP are the fractions, so 0 to 1 on both axes. And this will make sense why we're using this in a moment. For the actual data glow piece, um, you take the X and Y, and you use them in a background image, a radial gradient. So we have our spotlight size and then the position. So it's going to be a circle at X and Y. And the magic piece is background attachment fixed. So that fixes the background relative to the viewport. And that means wherever we move, the background is going to fit up with whatever card we're over. And then if we hop into this other demo, this will kind of break it up a little bit, make, hopefully make it make sort of more sense. So if we spread them out, this is how it works. You're moving your cursor around and it's updating this radial gradient. And then you have the three elements that make up the glow. So you have the background of the actual element itself, and then you can make use of the two pseudo elements. So you can take both of these and create these kind of fake borders and to do that, it's just imagine it's the same background used on each, but the color is varying slightly and the spotlight size to make a bit more detail. But then using mask composite, you clip away everything you don't want and just leave this fine border, which will match up with the border size used on the card itself or this fake border. So you can see here the spotlight's clipping away and we've got one for like a bright color and then the shine mask is like this spotlight color, it's more white, it's brighter. And then when they're all combined, it gives that effect of like bright white, then colored, then faded on the body. And this is how it looks because they're all stacked. So you just imagine that they're stacked, they're all moving the same. And then when they're all put on, then that's what gives you the effect. If we hop back in, this is the mask composite code. So it's those three lines. You take two masks, composite them together with an intersection, and take the piece that you want, which would just be that little border. And you make sure that the background size accounts for that border. And then it just takes the radial gradient piece. So that's cool. But how about the little outer glow? How does that work? So, go back to our minimal piece. These both have this outer glow, but the trick is it's an inner element with a filter blur on it. So if we take the blur off, and if I can find it, take the blur off, you see it's just a fatter border with a filter blur, which gives the impression that it's like this outer glow. Um, it gives you a really neat effect and it doesn't cost much to just make use of that inner element style. And the last piece is how the color changes as you move. That's kind of interesting. Um, you can do that here. So we've got this hue custom property. So say we have a base color of like 320, which would be around hot pink for a hue. And then we give it a spread of say 500. And then using our XP value, we're saying like add XP times 500 to this base hue. So it could be like, say it was 300 and 500 spread. 
the value could be between 300 and 800 as the pointer moves across the screen. And that's what changes the color of the backdrop as you move. So it's just updating as you move. You're letting CSS handle it for you. And you get that kind of dynamic color spotlight effect, which is kind of neat. So you can turn that on and off or you can change the spread however you want. But hopefully that makes a bit of sense and uh, explains how it kind of works and if you've got any more questions let me know I just tried to throw this together and it took probably more takes than I wanted but yeah cool stay awesome